Okay, to start off, I'm gonna make a one molar solution of magnesium sulfate. So I've measured out 60 grams of magnesium sulfate, 400 milliliters of water. I'm gonna stir that up, and I can do that with a um, stirring rod, wooden coffee stirrer, straw. And that'll take a couple minutes to make. It really isn't critical to use 60 grams. Uh, you could use 30. 120, you can make a half molar or two molar solution. Higher molarity will go faster um, for producing the gases, but I'll stick with the, out, the recipe as outlined. And I'll add a little bit more water to top off at 500 milliliters. Keep stirring that. Next thing I'm gonna do is, uh, once that's all dissolved, I'm gonna pour some of that into a test tube. Try to fill that test tube up with the solution and cap it. And then submerge it into the, the liquid so that it's filled with the same solution. I'm almost ready here. I'm gonna stir a little bit more. Okay, I got my magnesium sulfate all dissolved. Next thing I'm gonna do is pour some of that into a test tube. Fill it up and cap it. With it capped, I'm going to then flip it upside down, submerge it in the liquid, and with my other hand, remove the bottom cork. And when I do that, if it's submerged in the liquid, none of the liquid comes out of the test tube. It's still filled with liquid. I want to repeat that for a second test tube. bubble in there but mostly filled with liquid still in both and now I want to put my stainless steel um, hooks in and I want to lift my test tube up just enough to get it over the top of one of the hooks if I lift it out of the water completely out of the solution completely um, all the liquid will spill out of the test tube when I get it over the hook I slide it back down on top of it and I do that for the second hook too And now both hooks are on the inside of the test tubes. Great. So now this is ready to hook my battery to. And for that, I'll take one battery, or I can do two batteries or three batteries. I'll show each of those um, to start the hydrolysis reaction. I'll attach one set of alligator clips to one of the metal hooks, the other to the second. And then on the battery, uh, I can attach this directly to each of the tabs on it. And now it's starting to bubble. Uh, I'll let this one run at uh, the rate it currently is and see how long that takes to produce a test tube that's about three quarters filled with gas in the one that is producing the gas the fastest. That'll be hydrogen. Uh, that'll leave this one a little about three-eighths full with the other gas, which will be oxygen. I can speed things up, but it takes more 9-volt batteries to do that. And the way you can speed it up is to daisy-chain the batteries together by attaching the short positive 
tab to a negative tab on here. Now this will be an 18 volt battery. Chain this one onto uh, either one of these, so negative to positive. And now I have a 27 volt battery and I can attach my alligator clips to these two tabs. And you wanna make sure you always hook it back up to the same tabs as before because you don't wanna produce hydrogen gas and oxygen gas in the same test tube. Um, that's, that's very dangerous. You always wanna leave it hooked up to the same tabs. Um, okay, I'm checking in on this setup with one battery about an hour later and uh, I have about, looks like about a third filled with uh, of one tube filled with gas and two thirds of another tube filled with gas. And that's looking promising because um, we need one of them three quarters filled and the other about three eighths of the way filled. And it's okay to have more to be completely filled for both. Um, but this took about an hour and I'm gonna cap what I have now so I can do some flammability tests on it. And uh, it'll probably take about a third as long if I use three batteries. Um, but also notice that the liquid is starting to turn a little yellow towards the bottom. That's actually a product of um, the reaction with the electrical energy we're putting in and the Epsom salt. Um, so we don't want to draw attention, um, kids attention to that. So we would show them this setup after uh, an extended amount of time because that'll get yellower and yellower. Um, it, certainly a color change down there is evidence of a chemical reaction, but that's not what we want to draw their attention to. We want to be focusing on the gas and the water conversion to gas, not the fact that there may be another substance in the water, which we've added uh, to help speed up um, the reaction. So at this point, I'm going to unhook the electrical energy from the battery. And... Now I'm going to reach in with my hand into the water. So actually I should do this. I can do this with a um, test tube holder. I'm gonna show how to do it that way. Hold on, get that. Okay, I'm back. I was gonna do that with a test tube holder and then realize there's another way to do it uh, that described in the protocol, which is simply to uh, hold the, the cap with a test tube holder and bring that down to the bottom of the container, lift up one of the test tubes a little bit off the hook that's a metal hook it's on, and then press down on the cap. Show that again for the second one, in case that was looked like that one was blocked. And then lift that out, and now it's capped. And to get the remaining liquid out there, I could uh, slide it a little bit, and then cap it. Now I have gas in there, and that's hydrogen gas, so I want to label that one that was producing the most bubbles as A, and I'm going to go on to B, and I'll show that process of capping again. Get a new cap, put in the test tube holder, sorry, in the test tube clamp, lift this up, slide it over the cap, lift the whole thing up, and now And you can take that out now. And now it's about a third filled with oxygen and I can release the rest of the liquid and cap it and I can test this. So I'm gonna compare that to if I fill them completely with gas uh, by running three batteries together for about 45 minutes or an hour. Um, but each time I run a new batch, I should prepare a new solution and dump this old solution out. So I'll do that and start over. And uh, once I capture a second set of gases, we'll do some tests on those uh, to show the flammability results. Okay, in this setup, uh, I've stored the gas that I captured from before in separate cups just to hold it in. I don't have a test tube rack for them. Uh, I don't wanna put them in the same cup. I wanna keep the gas somewhat separate from each other. And the setup I built over here is the kind that you'd want to demonstrate to students uh, in lesson nine um, so they could see it live uh, producing bubbles. And um, I'll zoom in a little bit so that you can see the rate of bubble production for both, which is something we want students to be able to notice as well because accounting for the, that one of these is producing bubbles faster, the one on the right than the left, 
uh, will be an important clue later in helping us figure out some molecular structure of this substance. And notice I have three batteries hooked up for the demonstration. I wouldn't leave this running because again, the color change we saw before will start to happen. I'd unhook it um, after the demonstration and again, make sure to hook it up to the same clips a second time so that you're not producing hydrogen gas and oxygen gas in the same test tubes or just start over, uh, you know, empty the test tubes and uh, fill them a second time. So between one class and another, you could do something like this. You make sure to get the gas out. All right, do that for one, do that for the second one. Refill both with liquid, cap, flip upside down, do a second one, fill with liquid. Cap, flip upside down, reach in, you can reach in with your hand or test tube clamp and remove the cork. Do that again. Slide both of the hooks under the test tube, under one under each test tube. Make sure they're in separate test tubes. We're ready to demonstrate for another class and now it doesn't matter if I forgot which clip uh, was on which side of the battery because I'm starting to collect the gases anew. So I'll hook them up again. And you can see this time the left side is the one producing more bubbles, which would be the one that is hydrogen gas that I'd label with tape as A. And the second the one on the right is oxygen gas, which I'd label as B. Again, the kids don't know which kind of gas these are yet until we do the flammability tests, which we'll do after I collect the gas in both of these test tubes for us so we can do two batches, these and these, and see the results. We have the tube labeled A, which is the one that contains hydrogen gas. I'm going to demonstrate what the effect will be when we put a lit match underneath it and release the gas. Here's the match. You hear a little pop, a little explosion. That was with about three quarters full. We'll do another one where it has, um, it's completely full. We'll do a second one. Light another match. Remove the bottom. Here, another little explosion. Okay, cool. This next one is uh, filled with oxygen. This is B. And um, you're going to want to use a wood splint. We were trying to use wood matches, but they don't, just don't glow enough. Uh, so, wood splint is like a bamboo skewer. Relight that a little bit so I get it glowing. I'll put out the flame before I put it in the uh, tube. So you want to get a little glow on the end, like that. And then you want to put it inside the tube. You can see it glows brighter when we do. We'll do that for a second tube. It again, maybe get a little bit more glow on the next stick. Again, I want to get the end glowing, uh, glowing ember on it. So maybe I'll let this one burn about 10 seconds before I put it in and blow it out. Okay, so I got a nice glow on it. Remove this, put this in, and it reignites. 